Hi guys, so um, that's a video to cover this unit here, rotational dynamics, because I didn't have time to cover it uh, in class. That's not going to be on the final. So it's going to be in a nutshell, but it's important if you are um, going into mechanical engineering, for example, or for physics majors, or just for a physics enthusiast. So uh, kinematics here for rotational motion is uh, very easy. So you can, um, I, I uh, refer you to your textbook. We have these relationships here that we talked about last time. And here, I just want to cover very quickly rotational um, dynamics. So here for linear motion, you have the mass, which is the resistance to, um, to change the state of motion for linear motion. And here for rotation, we have what it's called the moment of inertia. So it's the resistance to rotational motion. That is how difficult it is to change the rotational motion of an object. And of course, it's going to depend on the mass as discussed in class, but it also depends on the distribution of the mass relative to the axis of rotation. So for example, here, you have a given mass, but you are just changing the uh, distance of the masses from the axis of rotation. And if you do the experiment, you see it's going to be much easier to rotate this way than to rotate here, right? So this is called moment of inertia or rotational inertia. Okay, so last time we talked about a few examples. Um, just have to find the examples that we were talking about. Here. So you see the moment of inertia for uh, different shapes. And you see, for example, if you take a solid cylinder or a hoop here, so that's going to be a solid sphere. And this is a hollow sphere. That means that it's easier if you want to change the spin rate of um, shape. So if, you, if maybe that cylinder is spinning and you want that cylinder to spin faster, or the, the solid sphere. So this is the solid sphere is spinning and you want to increase the rate of spin. You see that it's easier. Um, you, you're gonna have less resistance with a solid sphere than, than you have with a solid cylinder or a hoop, okay? Because look, the moment of inertia in all those cases, including these, depends on the mass, so it's proportional to the mass, that makes sense, but also the distribution of the mass relative to the axis of rotation. So R, let's say that's going to be the size, okay, so it's going to show the size of the object, and you see here the coefficient is 1. The coefficient here is um, 0 0.4, and the coefficient here is 0 0.6, the coefficient here is 0 0.5. So this one has the least moment of inertia, okay? Um, here you see, if um, a worker has a long pole, the pole has a large moment of inertia. Longest, the, the longer it is, larger is the moment of inertia. So that will guarantee that it will be hard to fall, to, to rotate, right? In one, one way or the other way. Okay, so um, here, the same, same idea, solid sphere about an axis of rotation. The coefficient here is only 0 0.4. Here you have 0 0.5. Here you have one, and that will be a hollow sphere. So if you take all those shapes, let's say you have the same mass and the same size to begin with, and you have a race on an inclined plane, you expect 
and so it's rolling it doesn't uh, slide so it's rolling without slipping so it's rolling down this the the inclined plane so you expect this one uh, to win the race second will be this one third will be that one so if you have only three so let's uh, i have a video for you uh, if i can find it of course here So you see, they are all rolling. First, the sphere. Second, the uh, solid uh, cylinder. Third, the hoop. Oh. Or the hollow cylinder. So interestingly, because it's uh, rolling down, if you neglect friction, then the mass does not matter. It's going to cancel out into the equations. Also, the size, the radius does not matter. Okay, so that's not too intuitive, but that's due to the fact that it's like free fall, right? Except gravity is diluted, so the, the mass does not matter, and R square, R square will uh, cancel out. So I will show you that later on. So I have a video here. Um, I think it's from Rice University. So what I've got here is three cylinders, different sizes. So see, different size, different mass, and they will make it at the same time. Because when it's rolling down an inclined plane, the mass and the size uh, don't matter. This is in different, different, different masses because they're made out of different materials. This one is really heavy. I'm pretty sure it's steel. It looks like it's made out of iron. This one is solid <laughs> except for a teeny hole in the middle. It's shiny and light, probably aluminum. This is probably also steel but it's at least a different size, right? Three cylinders. What we're gonna do is let them roll down the ramp and I'm gonna start them exactly together and we'll see if they have the same acceleration of their center of mass. Let's see, here we go. Sure enough, you heard them all hit. They all fell off the ramp at exactly the same time. Amazing. And a couple of empty cylinders here, different sizes. I think they're both aluminum, but they are different sizes. So is it true for every shape? Or is it just true for a solid cylinder? Let's find out. Mm, and go, and boom. Exactly the same. Hit it exactly. So here's three spheres. They're all solid spheres. Uh, this is rubber, this is rubber, this feels harder, probably Bakelite or something like that. And, uh, and we know for a sphere, two-fifths goes here. And again, all you're going to have is a constant down here, two-fifths plus one. This should go down at five-sevenths, g sine theta. So we will show later on that, you see the acceleration here does not depend on the radius. It's going to be crossed out and does not depend on the... Um, mass it does depend on the coefficient here of uh, for the moment of inertia it does depend on on this angle here and on gravity of course now let's see if they all go down the same surely they will this will be less of a noisy crash but more fun to watch and boom okay so again, that comes from uh, Rice University, I think. Okay, so if you if you have a rice here, uh, sorry, a race, this one will arrive first because we have a 0 0.5, and this one will arrive second because the coefficient here is one. And I can refer you to this uh, video here. Okay, so, for a point mass, okay? So let's say you have like a plane going um, on a circular track. So of course here you have a centripetal acceleration and uh, which is V squared over R. But you see here there is a force applied. Maybe the, the airplane, it's a toy, has a small engine. So the engine here burning fuel, I don't know, or pushing air. So anyway, there will be a thrust. That thrust will provide the plane with a 
tangential acceleration. So it means it's going to spin faster. It will also have uh, angular acceleration, right? So if we look at the rotation, so you see that the torque, we can say that the torque due to this force relative to this axis of rotation e equals two, the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. Okay, so it's like Newton's second law. So you can see that here. For linear motion, you have F equals MA. And for rotational motion, you have the torque due to a force relative to an axis of rotation e equals the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. And we discussed that you can go from the tangential acceleration to the angular acceleration, okay? You just have to multiply by R here. You look at the unit. This one is meter per second per second. And this one is rad per second per second. Radian is like a ghost uh, unit. So my point is that for a moment of inertia for a point, okay, it's going to be mass times the distance here uh, between the mass and the axis of rotation square. So there is a square here. So it means if you if you bring, bring it closer, okay, so you divide by two, okay, so it will be multiplied by, uh, it will be um, divided by four, okay, so the moment of inertia will be divided by four, right? So it's going to go four times as fast because of that relationship. Okay, so slide number six. Okay, we get that. So for example, here, um, an example, this one is easy. So let's, um, let's say we call that, so you have a mass M1, mass M2. I'm gonna call that L. And this is also L here. And we want to find the moment of inertia in this case here and that case here, relative to, relative to this axis of rotation. So here, of course, M1 um, doesn't, doesn't count because it's on the axis of rotation. So the moment of inertia here e equals to M2, times the distance square, okay? And it's gonna be M2, let's say it's M L square, okay? In this case, okay, so it works like um, in a linear motion, you need to add the moment of inertia. So it's gonna be the moment of inertia because of M2 plus the moment of inertia because of M1. Okay, so you need to add the moment of inertia. So because of M2, you're going to have M, let's say M1 equals M2 equals M. So here I'm going to have that distance here is L over 2, but I square it plus inertia. Uh, from from that mass here, it's going to be m. Okay, so we have m and uh, this one. So that it doesn't. So this distance here is the same as that one. So it's easier to to rotate the two masses, and they are connected by a rigid bar in this case than in in that case. Okay. So rigid bar without a mass, okay? We, we just suppose that we neglect the mass here. Um, yeah, it says thin rigid rod. So this example comes from the book um, that I recommend for uh, MCAT. It's called Johnson. Have to check the spelling and Kutnell physics. Okay, slide number eight. Okay, so that's just the answers. So you have different shapes. So if the rod here has a mass, 
So that's going to be the moment of inertia. And you see now, 112 is the coefficient. Now, if the axis of rotation is placed at one end, it's going to increase the moment of inertia. So in fact, a rotation about the center of mass, so that will be the center of mass, okay, if it's all homogeneous. So the moment of inertia about an axis that goes through the center of mass is always smaller than a rotation about another axis, which is parallel to this one, okay? So for example, you can um, either you do the computation or you just apply just what I've said. Um, Here. So if you want to, um, if you move, so the axis of rotation is here and it's going, uh, this one will be um, counterclockwise. So if, if I want to know how easy it's going to be um, to make it to start a rotation, for example, so it's going to be that mass here, so it's going to be 0 0.64, okay? And it's a point mass, okay? So the inertia for a point mass is just mR squared, okay? And then for a shape, it's going to be different because you have to use calculus or you use a table. So it's here we're just talking about point mass, okay? So for point mass, just the mass here, about an axis of rotation, inertia is just mR squared. Okay, so the mass times the distance squared. Okay, so it's going to be 0 0.64. And here we have um, distance uh, from the mass to the axis of rotation, which is 16 here. And then plus 0 0.64. And then that distance here, it's going to be uh, 3 fourths square, it's going to be something like this, L square. So you see the moment of inertia will be, we combine like term, like term, 16. Okay, now if you place the axis of rotation here at the center, um, you should get something smaller, right? Because if you place it here, which is the center of mass, because the mass here are equals to each other, and the moment of inertia will be 0 0.64 times, that will be L squared over 4, plus 0 0.64, and then that's going to be um, L squared over 4, so it's going to be 0 0.64, L square over two. So you see here 10 over 16, okay? It's gonna be 10 divided by 16. It's gonna be uh, 0 0.65. So this here is 0 0.65. So this is here 0 0.625, uh, sorry. And this one here is 0 0.5. So this one has a larger moment of inertia but um, like if you have a question like this, it's just, um, it's gonna decrease, right? Because you know that the center of mass, rotation about the center of mass is always smaller relative to other axes parallel to the axis going over the center of mass to, to say it uh, properly, okay? And um, what about this one? If you can pause the video, uh, you see that uh, it doesn't, so sphere, the moment of inertia is, um, I think it's 0 0.4, right? 150, 0 0.2, so 0 0.4, so it's going to be 0 0.4. Okay, so 0.4 mass radius square. So you see that it's proportional. So the moment of inertia is proportional to the mass, okay? That will be true for any solid object. So, um, 
So if uh, same radius, so if you multiply the mass by three, the radius will be multiplied by three because it's a proportion. Okay. Um, this uh, is just to make sure you know how to apply. So this one is uh, very easy. Okay, so you can pause the video and try to do it. So about the axis of rotation is here. So the moment of inertia, okay, it's always relative to, so relative to the axis of rotation here going through O, you add all the moment of inertia. So it's going to be M A square plus, then you have this one, M A square, and we neglect the mass of the rod. Otherwise you, you will need to add uh, this one as well. Okay. And plus, m b square plus m b square. So the moment of inertia will be this. Okay, so you can do the numerical application. So now if uh, the rotation is done about this axis, so you see inertia depends on the axis of rotation. So this one does not count. This one, I mean, this one, you don't take it in account because it's on the axis. You just take this one in account, this one in account. So that's going to be m a square multiplied by two. Okay. Uh, then um, from your book. Let's say, what does it say? Um, so here, um, A, okay, so you take the uh, rotation, axis of rotation here going through A. So it's going through A. What's going to be the moment of inertia? So we have C here. Okay, so it's going to make um, going around like this, right? It's going to describe a circle around the axis of rotation. Okay, so imagine it's going around. The axis go into the screen here. So it's going to be 0 0.2. And then that distance here, 0 0.4 square plus uh, from this mass here, it's going to be 0, okay, plus, and then this mass is also rotating, okay, it's going to rotate, it's going to rotate around here, and the radius is going to be 0 0.5, so it's going to be 0 0.1 time, um, I just want to make sure I got the right answer. Uh, 0 0.1 times 0 0.5 squared. Okay, so the moment of inertia, you can pause the video, make sure you have the right answer. It's going to be 0 0.057 kilometer, kilogram meter square. And that will be the axis, uh, the, the moment of inertia about about the the axis going through A. Okay, so this one is also going around and the circle has a radius of 0 0.5. So I, I hope you see that the axis of rotation is going into the screen. So I'm going a little bit fast, but you can stop the video whenever you want. And then they change the axis of rotation. Now it's going through BC. So since it's going through BC, so now the new axis uh, moment of inertia uh, about, so that will be about A. So here it will be the axis is B, C, okay? So it's going around in a circle. 
So we just have that point mass here. So it's going to be 0 0.3 times 0 0.4 squared. So that's going to be 0 0.048 uh, kilogram per uh, meter second. Kilogram meter second. So it's a machine. And so for the machine, if you want a rotation, it's easier to take the axis of rotation going through B and C. Okay. And here, what, what is the kinetic energy? It's going uh, for this. So we have rotation about this axis of rotation, and they want to know um, the kinetic energy. So it's called rotational kinetic energy here, one half. Instead of having the mass, we have the moment of inertia. And here we have the angular speed square. So the, this is the idea behind a flywheel. Okay, so it has um, kinetic energy. Okay, so kinetic energy, 0 0.5, uh, the, the, the moment of inertia omega square. So with a flywheel, you can store a lot of energy that will be delivered after because you can make that moment of inertia very large, okay? Um, so where was I? So ki kinetic energy will be 0 0.5. So if it's about A, I have to use this moment of inertia and then the angular, so the, 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 the axis going into your uh, screen, and that will be omega, so four squared. So the kinetic energy, which is rotational kinetic energy, will be okay, 0 0.46 joule. You might want to check, okay, because I did that uh, quickly. So hopefully it's going to be right. Okay. And I, okay, so this is very important. So if you if you understand that, most of the problem uh, is going to be easy because I'm going to teach you a trick. So so you have a composite system here. So you have a platform here and, and a point mass. That that person is like a point mass. So the whole thing is rotating. So to find the moment of inertia about this axis of rotation, and that's like a disk, okay? You you want, so E, uh, the, the, sorry. So the total moment of inertia will be the moment of inertia of the point mass, that person here, plus the moment of inertia of uh, the platform, okay? Which is like, um, like the cylinder, and the cylinder is m r square cylinder. No, it's zero point five m r square. Okay, cylinder. It's a cylinder. It's a platform. Okay, it's a disc. Okay, so it's the whole system that is rotating about the axis of rotation. So the total inertia about the axis of rotation A, it's going to be m r square, because this is like a point mass going around the axis of rotation, plus the inertia because of the cylinder here. That's going to be 0 0.5 m r square. So the total inertia will be the mass of this person is 60 uh, times 2 square plus 0 0.5 times 500 times 2 square. Okay, so I don't know if I did the computation. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be 1240. Okay, now the most important thing comes comes next. Um, if you have that system here, okay, so you have a pulley. Well, let's say the pulley is a cylinder here that has a mass m. So before, um, 
we we said okay, the pool is massless, but now it's not massless anymore. It has a moment of inertia. Okay, and let's say it's going down, accelerating down. Do you see that T1 here is going to be T1 there, and you have a T2 and you have a T2 there. However, that T1 okay, is not the same as T2 because T1 not only has to deal with this, but also with that. Okay, it has to work against the inertia of the pulley. Okay, so T1 is not going to be equal to T2. Okay, so that's the first thing. And of course, here it's accelerating down. So, of course, here it's going to accelerate up. Nothing has changed, but now it's rotating and we have an angular acceleration. And we know the relationship between this and that. Okay, if, if the string is rigid here, and we suppose the, the, the string does not have mass. Okay, so we have the relationship A equals r alpha, okay? So that's meter per second per second. This is meter, and this is rad per second per second. And we said that rad is a ghost unit, so all is good here, okay? So the trick to do that is, um, first of all, you see you have that pulley, and you have a mass here, m1, and let's say you have a mass m2. On, on the other side. So every ha everything happened, like you have the pulley here, and the string doesn't count, right? Doesn't have mass, it's just connecting both of them. So you will get the same thing if you put your mass M1 here, and you have the mass M2 there, okay? So I'm gonna show you a trick to solve all those problems, uh, which is called um, composite uh, system. So a system with, one, two, three components, right? So let's say, consider a platform that is rotating here. Like here, it's a pulley, okay, and it's rotating. Everything happened like the mass here is attached here. This mass is attached there. So if, so if you consider this system here, you see that the moment of inertia of that system here, and it has a R, the radius r, it's going to be m2 r square. Ah, I don't have this. Yeah, it's going to be m2 r square plus m1 r square plus the moment of inertia of the platform here, right? P. So it could be one half m r square. But sometimes they give you, okay, sometimes it's a weird pulley, so they give you the, the value for uh, the moment of inertia. But my point is, when you have a pulley here, or you have a platform with a mass M2 and a mass M1, to find the moment of inertia of the whole system, so you put your system here in a bag, okay, it's like a bag here, so if you want to find the moment of inertia of the whole system, because it's all system that is rotating, then you add the individual moment of inertia. So same thing here, you can imagine, and that's a trick, okay? It's just one way to do it. You, you don't have to do it my way, you can do it uh, the book way. But uh, you see everything happens like this mass is attached to there, okay, and it's rotating. This mass is attached to here and it's also rotating. Okay, so I'm I'm going to show you how to do it. And then you memorize it, and then and then little by little you will understand why. So I take my whole system here. Okay, so I want to find the inertia, the moment of inertia of the whole system. Okay, and again you cannot say that T1 here is T1 course because that's one string and we neglect the mass of the string but you cannot say that t1 equals to t2 of course because it's accelerating down that course here is larger than t1 and t2 is larger than 250 so anyway you put everything in a bag the inertia kind of like we did before the total inertia okay will be equals to 
that mass here, yeah, which is 35 r square plus this mass here, 25 r square plus the inertia of the pulley. And the inertia of the pulley sometimes is 0 0.5 m r square. Okay, if uh, if it's just like a disk, a plain disk. Okay, so if you do it this way, it's going to make it very easy to do the problem because now you just apply um, Newton's second law. So you just apply what we used to do. Okay, the net force equals m a. So the net torque equals moment of inertia times alpha. Okay, so I will do examples so just to give you the idea. So which one is the winner? Which one make, makes the rotation happen? That's going to be this force. Okay, so I'm going to do 350. So it comes from Newton's second law. The sum of the torque equals inertia times alpha. Inertia is the total inertia. So the torque due to this one, 350 times R minus this one is trying, so this one is trying to make this torque here, which is, uh, what is it? That's why the angular uh, acceleration is, is in this direction, which is counterclockwise, okay? So counterclockwise torque, and here I try to resist, right? So it's, it's called the loser, right? So it will be the clockwise one. So it's going to be 250 R equals the total amount of inertia. So it's going to be 35 R squared plus 25 R squared plus, and you have here 0 0.5 M R squared if it's a platform times alpha. Okay, and you'll also have this equation here. So it's just the general idea. Let's take example. Okay, you can pause the video. If if you understand that, then it's all good. Okay. Kind of what we did before. So if you want to find the moment of inertia of a solid here, right? So maybe it's a composite system or maybe it has a weird form. So if it has a weird form, I cannot use uh, the table here, okay? So you have, in that case, you have to use calculus, okay? So the moment of inertia is the sum of all the inertia of each little system here. Okay, so if um, uh, that's, that's, I will refer you to your uh, book, uh, if, um, it, it, it can happen that you have to do some um, calculus. So the sum of R squared over R will depend, uh, uh, um, R squared times the mass can become an integral, okay? So if it's in 3D, you see, you, you can use a density of volume, okay? If it's, uh, if it's uh, linear, here you use the linear density. If it's a surface, then you use the surface density. Okay, so I refer um, to the textbook, it's just math. So here you have an example. So uh, here I refer you to the book, University Physics, and I recommend to do those problems here. It's just calculus, okay? You can do that on your own. You can hide the solution and try to find the moment of inertia about this axis here. I'm missing one slide. I think I, sorry, I skipped one slide. Okay, I should have that slide above. So let's let's talk about that again. If the pulley has a mass, okay. So the trick, and I will go back to my uh, previous slides. I'm just um, try to do it in a nutshell. You see, you take that system here again, okay, and we want to apply Newton's second law. So the torque 
E equals the moment of inertia, but that will be the total one, total moment of inertia times the acceleration, okay? So torque, you have the winner here, so that's going to be 350, okay, uh, times R minus, this one is resisting, so this one wants to make your angular acceleration, which is counterclockwise. This one is trying to make it clockwise. Torque equals, and here you have to add all the moment of inertia. So from this one, plus from this one, and then from the platform. So it could be 0 0.5 mass of the pulley R square, and then you have alpha. Okay, and then you have A, okay, equals R alpha. So that will be the easiest way to solve this kind of problem. So you see you have T1 here and T2, they are not equal to each other. How can we find them? So, and it's easy, okay, Newton second law, we know 350 minus T1, that's going to be inertia because now it's linear, okay, times A. And this one is the winner here. So T2 minus should be a minus 250 equals 25A. Okay, I, I go a little bit fast, but we did that already before, except that before we had T1 equals T2 because we neglect the mass of the pulley. And you see that T1 has to move. Not only it has to work against gravity here, but it's helped by gravity here, but it has to work again, gravity from this one, but it has to also make that um, pulley uh, rotate, okay, to get a rotation. If the pulley has no mass, so you can pause the video, that's that's how we used to do it, right? We, we used to put everything in a bag here, and we used to say, okay, 350 is the winner, minus 250 is the loser, equals total inertia because it's linear times A because in that case, we suppose that M equals zero, okay? So it's exactly the same idea. So I should have put that uh, video before. Okay, so that's when you have to do some uh, calculus. So it's just a review of calculus here. Okay, so that's called the linear density. That will be the surface density, the volume density. Okay, so here you have an example, and I refer you to these uh, problems in your textbook, which is university physics. And then you have something called the parallel axis theorem. Okay, so, the, so remember the rotation. If you have a rotation through an axis that goes through the center of mass, okay, the moment of inertia will be the least. Okay if uh, uh, related to the axis going through the center of mass. Now, if you have an axis parallel to this one, so parallel to the axis going through the center of mass, then you can apply this equation. R is the distance between the axis. This is the moment of inertia relative to the axis going through the center of mass. And this is a random um, axis. Textbook. 9.9. .9. Again, that comes from your uh, uh, that comes from your book, University Physics, which is an excellent book for engineers. If you want to um, go into engineering, okay. For for those who wants to go into biology, MCAT, I recommend Jensen and can uh, uh, Jensen and Kurt Net. Okay, so here you have an example, uh, blah blah blah. So the mass is three point six kilogram. Moment of inertia about this axis here. Okay, so we have. The moment of inertia about this axis here. 
and you have the distance between them and you have the axis, the moment of inertia about the axis going through the center of mass. And if you know the moment of inertia um, about, if you know, maybe you did an experiment, so you know the moment of inertia about this axis, you can find the moment of inertia about that axis here, right? Because we have the equation that the moment of inertia about an axis here parallel to this axis there, okay? Uh, plus, and then the equation is m r squared. So this is called the parallel, parallel axis uh, theorem, okay? So this is given, so the, it's going to be 0 0.132. That will be the moment of inertia about an axis going through the center of mass plus the mass is given 3.6 that distance is given so you can find this and the answer is um, okay so you see the parallel between linear motion and rotational motion for a solid object going around an axis of rotation. So F equals MA. And here you have the parallel here, torque equals moment of inertia about an axis. So torque about the same axis times the angular acceleration. And if we do calculus, remember the torque is a vector and it's a cross product of R and F. Cross product of R by F. It's it's a vector. Uh, kinetic energy, so it's a scalar, one half mv square. You have rotational kinetic energy, one half, and here you have the moment of inertia, and here you have omega. Momentum, momentum is a vector, so it's proportional to the velocity. Okay, it's a vector, very important. Linear, that's the linear momentum. And you also have angular momentum, L, which is a vector, and it's proportional to the angular velocity, which is also a vector. Okay, so we talk about that. You take your right hand here, so if it's rotating counterclockwise this way, omega will be um, in the same direction as your thumb. So if it's rotating in this direction, omega will be here. So if omega will be in this direction, L, the angular momentum will be also in this direction. Turns out that for a point mass, the angular momentum is a vector and it's defined by your cross product, okay? So it's defined by the cross product between uh, R, okay? So that will be the vector distance, so it's a distance, but it's a vector, it's a vector between the axis of rotation and the point, okay? Uh, don't want to uh, go into that, but my point is you can always connect rotation, linear, okay? Rotation, linear, okay? So there is always a bridge between them. Uh, Newton's second law, a different way to hide Newton's second law from uh, that that's the way it was written in Principia by Newton F equals dp over dt so if you change the momentum there will be that's because there was a force applied if the angular momentum is changing because there is a torque applied okay um, if you want to dig more into that topic I recommend that video by Walter Levin. Okay, so if um, there is a spin around, around an, ax, an axis that goes through the center of mass, okay, the angular momentum becomes an intrinsic property, okay, like the mass. Okay? It's like a blueprint. Okay, so let's go back to Newton's second law. Okay, you see here you have. Um, Airplane, so of course, you're going to have a centripetal 
acceleration, but you also have a tangential acceleration okay, in this direction because you have a force. So that will be for the linear motion. And then you will go from here, we go to the rotational motion. We can define the torque due to F okay, equals to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. So this is the tangential acceleration, this is the angular acceleration, and that's that's the bridge between linear and rotation. So hopefully it starts to make uh, sense. Okay, so here we have the net torque. Here you have the total moment of inertia if you have a composite system, that will be your acceleration. Okay, so example, if you have something called the Fouetté, when I know I'm saying it right, so it's called Fouetté, and she's going to start to spin, but that, that happens because with her foot here, you see there is a torque. Okay, so it's called like um, a moment, a moment of a couple, right? You have the torque due to this force and the torque due to that force here, and they are equal to each other. So it makes the rotation happens. So I have a short video here, I don't know, somewhere. Here, Fouetté. that when she extends the leg, she's going to spin slower and then she bring it back in to give herself momentum, so it's going to spin faster. So it's called the, it's called a fouetté. Um, I had another cool video that I forgot here. What we're doing right now, it's a little bit about torque. So you see here, He's, uh, he has a mass here at a distance, a small distance, so it's going to be easier to rotate. And when the mass is going to be moved away from the axis the rota of rotation, so this is the axis of rotation, the moment of inertia about this axis of rotation is going to... But this increase. is a stick with a heavy mass on it. So if we go to this formula, we could say, let's ignore the mass of the, of the rod, the stick, it doesn't matter. Let's just think about the mass here, this big heavy mass. And I'm gonna rotate it with my hands around an axis around the handle, right? So we can see the mass times the separation squared. When it's here, the moment is small. And if I hold it, I can very easily turn it up by 90 degrees. See how easy that is? No effort whatsoever. But now, what if I increase R to here? Then what's going to happen? Take it, bigger moment, and that's the size I can't. Any higher than that. Okay, it's a nice video. Um, okay, another application. If you have the Earth and the Moon, you see you have the force due to gravity here. So the, there will be a force applied to the Moon. It's exaggerated in such a way that the moon is going to be locked. Okay, so it means it's always showing the same face here. So it takes the moon 27 days to run the Earth, and at the same time, it's kind of rotating 27 days. So it's also, it's always showing the same, same face. So we talk about that here, you have wheel and axle. So you see here, the moment of inertia will be the moment of inertia of a solid cylinder, okay? And here you apply the effort, okay? So F1, R1, so that will be the torque due to your force applied, okay? If you have the load, which is a negative torque because it's resisting, okay? Try to rotate the other direction, so minus F2, R2, F2 is the weight here, will be equals to 
the moment of inertia from of the, of the solid times the acceleration alpha. Okay, so this is called wheel and axle. And uh, we talk about that in the human body, you have wheel and axle here. So a small, you have a, a small rotation here and here it's amplifying uh, the motion. Okay, uh, remember that the torque, torque is proportional to the speed, the angular speed, okay? because torque is proportional to the acceleration. So let's say you have a platform. So this is important to understand. Uh, you have a platform and you have omega is a vector. So you take your right hand, initial spin, okay? Initial speed, rotational speed, how fast it's spinning. It's go, it's up. And then you apply a torque. So let's say it's a bicycle wheel. Okay, you make it go faster. Okay, so you apply a torque here, you have force um, tangent here. So you have a force, you apply a force, it's going to spin faster. That's going to be the final angular velocity. So the acceleration is going to be in this direction, right? Because it's going to be the final minus initial. Okay, acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. So it will be in this direction, right? Now, if the thing is spinning too fast and you apply a, a torque to slow it down, okay? So the initial velocity was this vector here, and now it's going to slow down, and that's the final velocity is going to be this vector there. So you see the torque or the acceleration is in this direction, okay? Because the torque is proportional to the acceleration, and the force is proportional to, to the acceleration for uh, linear motion, okay? Does it make sense? It's like uh, final, final minus initial. It's going to be in this direction. Now, a torque, okay, does not have to make the platform go faster or slower. It can also change the orientation of the spin, okay? So here, the, the, the speed does not change, but only the orientation is changing, okay? So it's like you take a bicycle wheel and you, you do this, right? So you change the orientation. That means that the torque will be in this direction. So the acceleration will be in this direction, okay? So you are changing the orientation of the spin. So that will explain what we call precession. Okay, so you have a precession. For example, you, you hold the bicycle wheel and I, I will upload the demo. You have a string, you have a bicycle wheel here and it's gonna spin. You make it spin before, make sure it's spinning. Okay, so this is the string. This is your bicycle wheel and it, it's spinning in this direction. So you take your right hand, okay? So spinning toward you, spinning toward you, that will be your velocity here, okay? But at the same time, you see, there is the weight. So the weight wants to make the wheel fall, okay? So the weight wants, you see, wants to do this, right? We have the torque here due to this weight. So we want to, rot to, to make a rotation, such as the torque is in the blackboard or in the screen. So this was the initial velocity. Now you have a torque into the blackboard or an acceleration into the blackboard. So the wheel will precess. Okay. So again, that happens because you have gravity, right? Gravity wants to make the, take your right hand here, wants to make the, thing rotate here. So that's going to be your thumb into the screen. That's going to be the top. Okay, so this is called precession. So I'm going to show you a video by Walter Levin. So he used to teach at um, MIT. Here. And maybe I'm going to make it go faster. 
Suppose I have here a string, a rope, like we have there. And I stick into that rope, I attach to the rope this wheel, just like so. And I let it go. Well, we all know what will happen. Pfft, clunk. So there is Clear. torque because right. of the weight. But now I'm going to spin it before I let it go. Where is the wheel? The wheel is here. So we'll spin it up and then we'll put it in here. Notice the way I'm spinning it. I'm holding it away from you now. From now. I'm going to change it and do it differently next. There it goes. Look at that. About 10 seconds. Isn't that amazing? Is that and it rotates seen from below sure. clockwise. Now it's going this way, and I'm going to redo the experiment, changing the direction of rotation, and then it will go the other way around. Now okay, so very cool. Um, if, you, if you want to watch the whole video, it's on uh, YouTube. But again, it comes back to here. If you want to change the orientation of the spin, there must be a torque. So in that case, the torque is the torque due to gravity, okay? So gravity try to make the wheel fall, okay? So the torque goes into the screen. So it's gonna change the orientation of, um, of the wheel, okay? Lots of application including the gyroscope, gyroscope here. Uh, if you want to do more advanced math, I refer you to this video on YouTube. It's a very good channel. So you can find this video on your own. Uh, here again, same idea. She's applying a torque, which is a moment of, of couple it's called because you have a force here and a force down and you have the same force. So the, the um, torque, will be equals to F times the distance between those two points. Okay, so anyway, there is a torque. The torque, you see, it wants to make the rotation here, okay, in this direction. Okay, so the torque is in the blackboard. Velocity initial is there. There is a torque into the blackboard, so the wheel is going to turn. Okay, it's going to turn such as that's going to be the new velocity. Okay, you see the torque is going to be toward her, so the wheel is going to turn. Okay, so it's going to be, so the wheel here is turning in uh, this direction here, so it's going to spin. It's going to rotate, precess, wants to precess. Okay, something happened with uh, the earth, that's because there was a torque due to the tug. Uh, from from the sun and the moon. Okay, so you can dig more into it if you're interested. Um, same idea here, right? When when you have a top, it's going to precess be because of that uh, phenomenon. Okay, so let's uh, do this one. Uh, I don't know how long. So maybe we'll do this. Um, Maybe it's going to be too long of a video. I don't know how long. Um, okay, let, let's do this one. Okay, so if you use my trick, you see those kind of problem, it's going to be super easy. Okay, so first of all, there was a mistake. That's, let's say it's a, it's a solid cylinder. So the inertia for a solid cylinder, it's going to be 0 0.5 mR squared. Okay, so if it was a hollow cylinder, it's going to be mR squared. Here we suppose it's solid. Okay, so just uh, ignore cylindrical shell. It's, uh, it's a little bit confusing, so ignore that. Okay, um, so this is 4 kilogram. okay? 
So that means you're going to have force here, 40 Newton. Then you have a tension here. And of course, you're going to have a tension there. Here, it's going to be the same because the string has no mass. And you have the acceleration A equals 4.9. Okay. And we suppose that the um, radius here is R. So I'm going to take my bag, imaginary bag. Okay. And I'm going to put everything in that bag here. So I don't care about T, but I know there is a rotation. So I'm going to say, okay, so the sum of the torque equals the moment of inertia about that axis here, but that will be total times alpha, the rotational um, angular acceleration, angular uh, acceleration, rotational acceleration, and we have A equals R alpha, okay? So it's it's, um, it's spinning, okay? So it's going to spin faster, and this one is falling faster. So this is linear, this is rotational, and you have the bridge here. Okay, so the torque here comes from that mass, of course. So we have 40, right? So 40 uh, times torque R. Okay, so that's the distance between. So everything happens like that mass here is located there, right? So it's pulling down. That will be your radius R. So it's going to be 40. You see that force here? Do you see that? It's just a force here, force here. So it's going to apply a torque. And that force is mg times R equals... That's where you want to use the trick here. So it's going to be M, which is 4 R squared plus the moment of inertia of your platform, which is 0 0.5. And mass is the unknown R squared times alpha. And alpha is the acceleration over R because it's R that is given. So you have 40 times r equals 4r squared plus 0.5mr squared times a over r. Okay, so you can pause the video and try to do that. So it goes, this one goes by, by, this one goes by, by. So you have 40 equals 4 plus 0 0.5 times the mass times the acceleration, right? I hope um, I did it right. And this is uh, 4.9 here. And you should get that the mass is 8 kilograms. Okay, you can pause the video anytime you want. Okay, so this one is also easy. Actually, it's easier, okay? It's, so it's like the, it's the, I, I refer you to the previous slide, it's Axel. Um, Will and Axel. Okay, so, um, so it's all solid here, okay? So it's a solid cylinder. So it's uh, inertia of the cylinder. It's going to be 0 0.5, the mass of that big cylinder here, because it's, it's like one big cylinder, except that here you have a force, which usually is um, the effort, and here you have the load, okay? So go back to the previous slide. And then 0 0.5 times, here we have R1. Okay, because it's the whole thing, it's the whole cylinder that is trying to rotate. So this one, you have a torque from that one, it wants to make a rotation in this direction. Okay, so I'm gonna, I like to take acceleration always in a, a positive direction. Okay, so I'm gonna call that direction positive, even though it's uh, clockwise, doesn't matter. I want that direction to be positive. It's gonna be easier. So then I'm going to apply the sum of the torque equals moment of inertia 
times the angular acceleration. So this one is trying to apply positive torque. So it's going to be F1 R1. This one is trying to apply a negative torque. Okay, it wants to rotate in the other direction. And if I take if I get a acceleration to be negative, it means it's rotating in the other direction. So F2 R2 equals 0 0.5 mR1 squared times alpha. Okay, so that means 5 times 1 minus F2 is what? You have to do it on your own. Okay, you can stop 6, but the radius is smaller, even though the force is larger, the, the radius is smaller, equals uh, 0 0.5, and then you have a 10, and then you have 1 square alpha. Okay, so alpha equals 0 0.5. If I'm not mistaken, you can do that on your own. Again, that refer you to the wheel and axle. Okay, I don't know where is my wheel and axle. Axle here. So this, this is what's happening. So it's one all cylinder. Okay. Can, can of this. So we talk about that. Here is a nice problem to do. And then again, you can use my trick. So first of all, you see that the axis of rotation, it's going to be here. I'm, I'm going to find the torque about the axis of rotation going through here. Um, and then you have here, that distance is given. That distance here is given. And you have also the weight here of that pulley, but we don't care because the torque due to the weight equals to zero because it's touching the axis of rotation. And you have also a reaction force from the support here, but we don't care because it's going, um, it's, it's touching, it's applied to the axis of rotation. So the torque due to this equals zero. So take the time, read the long, and you can uh, try, you can pause the video. It comes from the book, Johnson and Cutnet. Okay, so I'm gonna consider, so, okay, it's the motor here. So there is a tension here. I'm gonna call that T1. And then here you have the weight of the crate and it's given for, 420 Newton. So the mass is 442. And you have T2 here. So you have an acceleration A. Okay, so that distance is given. This distance there is given. And you have forces, but here apply here, but I don't care. And it's it's rotation here. There is a rotation. So it's an angular uh, rotation. Yeah. Ah, and this is the moment of inertia of the system here. It's called a dual pulley. I'm going to call that IP. So I'm going to take, so you don't have to do it this way, but I'm going to take here my system, my composite system here. It's going to be in a bag. Okay, so of course you're gonna have T2 here, but I really don't care because it's inside my bag. Exterior torque will be due to T1 and to the weight. Okay, so I'm gonna apply my uh, trick. So sum of the torque equals I alpha. When I say trick, it's just to compute the total inertia. So this is the winning torque. So it's going to be T1 and then L1 minus, so this is my positive direction, minus, um, this one is in the back. So I don't know what's going on inside, but I have this force here. So it's going to be minus uh, 4, 4, 2, 0, okay, L1. 
um, I'm, I'm going to put the numbers as I go along. So you have T1. Do we have T1? Okay, we have T1. Is this one, right? So T1 times that distance here, which is L1 minus this here, that torque here. And it's at a distance L2 equals, and that's when you have to be careful. The moment of inertia is the sum of each part of the system. So you have the pulley, which is IP, which is given, plus that mass here, so which is 4, 4, 2, and the distance is L2 squared. Uh, L2 square. So that will be that distance here, which is here, right? So L2. Um, ah. I want to fit everything on the line. Equals to, so it's going to be IP plus 442. L2, and then you have a square, right? So we have 2150 L1. Okay, let's do the, the number. So 2150 L1, which is 0 0.6 minus the torque from the weight, and the distance is L2, which is 0 0.2 equals. The moment of inertia here on the pulley, which is 46 plus that mass here is like it's attached there. Okay, it's like the string is not there. So it's going to be 442 times that small distance here is 0 0.2 square alpha. Okay. Right. Okay, so if you solve that, okay, so then it's easy. Okay, you subtract, then you divide by this, and you get something like that. Okay, so a problem that looks complex is not really complex because it comes from an algebra based uh, book, okay, which is Johnson and Cottonell. It's good for the MCAT. If you want to review for the MCAT, except they don't do it the same way. They, you can pause the video and they do it in different way, but you will get the same answer at the end. It's, it's more complicated what they do, but it's fine. Okay, so we are almost done. Almost done. You can pause the video, do this uh, whenever you want. This one is interesting. Algebra based. It comes from an algebra based book as well. Uh, so it's a wheel, okay, so you have a wheel, okay, R, so the radius is 0 0.15 meters, okay, there is a string here, um, you have a mass, 1.2, so 1.2 is the mass, Okay, and it's released, so it's going to fall. Okay, and the amount by which it's falling is H equals 2.5 meters, and the time elapsed equals 3.5 seconds. So it has a linear acceleration, it has a rotational acceleration so it means it's going to spin faster i'm going to take that direction here to be positive here okay and we have the relationship a equals r alpha so you i'm sure you can pause the video but i'm sure you've seen that already you can you can see that you can use 
kinematics here to find A, okay? Because we have the displacement equals 0 0.5 AT squared. So I take down to be positive. So 2.5 equals 0 0.5 acceleration times uh, time squared. That's going to be give you an acceleration of 1 meter per second per second. On, they want the moment of inertia of the wheel. That's what I told you that um, sometimes it's, it's, you don't apply the equation mr square. Okay. And, uh, and, and that's, that's your unknown. Okay. So then you apply again. Okay. So from here, I can find alpha. Okay, so alpha equals um, A divided by R, okay? And uh, R is 0 0.15. So 1 divided by 0 0.15, okay? So you find that alpha equals uh, 6, 6.67 rad per second per second okay so so that will be alpha here okay sorry I've got uh, disturbed here so that will be alpha Okay, and then we do the same thing as before. So we're gonna take the everything in a bag here, right? So it's a composite system. The torque comes from the weight here, which is about 12. Okay, so 12 Newton, okay? And we say that the torque due to the weight, okay, about the axis of rotation e equals the total moment of inertia times alpha. So the torque here will be 12, okay, times the radius, which is 0 0.15 equals the total inertia. So that's going to be inertia of the wheel. That's my unknown plus inertia because this is like it's a point mass attached here at, uh, at the edge. So it's going to be 1.2 times 0 0.15 squared times 6.67. Okay. Okay. And I took uh, gravity to be 10 meters per second per second. So you can solve for that just, uh, just algebra. You should find something like kilogram. 0 0.24. Okay, so all not done. Almost done. So this one also, the next one also comes from an algebra based book. I think it's called um, uh, Physics Made Easy, something like this. So it's like a prep book. But they have good problem. I think the um, publisher is Baron. Not sure. So anyway, let's do this one here. You can pause the video again. So fly wheel, okay? So it's a way to store energy. So you have a wheel here, 18 kilogram, okay? And you have the radius R. So R equals 0 0.20 and it's spinning at 150 rad per second. So it's how fast it's spinning. Okay, so it's spinning. It was spinning initial velocity. And then you have a break. Okay, so all that energy is going to be lost or transferred to something else. So the final velocity equals zero. And the time elapsed is 12 seconds. And they want what's going to be the breaking force. Obviously, 
um, you, you're going to have a torque. So here, the velocity is in the blackboard, okay? In the blackboard, it was spinning, let's say, uh, uh, we call that clockwise, okay? So there is a torque here, which, which uh, is towards you, okay? Because it's going to make uh, that um, stop. So maybe there is a the force supply is somewhere here, so there was a, uh, a torque here that will stop the wheel. So you see, already you can find the acceleration, which is the final minus initial divided by the time elapsed, and you find uh, minus 150 divided by 12, which is minus, um, there's minus 12.5 had per second per second. Okay, so torque equals moment of inertia times alpha. And if it's a disk shape, so I guess the torque will be negative, so minus F times R equals, so inertia will be uh, 0 0.5 mr square times minus 2.5. Okay, so alpha is negative 12.5. Okay, but this is positive here. That will be the moment of inertia. And that will be r. And radius is given. So you can solve for r. Okay. Oh, except here it says r equals mr square. I don't know why it says mr square. If it's a disk shape, I will say it's 0 0.5 mr square. You don't have to worry about it. They, they will tell you if it's 0 0.5 or, or uh, usually if it's a plain disk, it's 0 0.5. If it's like a bicycle wheel, it's mr square. It's a, it's a hoop. Okay, so with those kind of problems here, again, um, it's easy if you if you just apply the trick. So I refer you to, to your textbook uh, to practice, but the trick is, let's say you want to find A or alpha, okay, and this one has, has a mass, okay, so again, M1G, we make things happen. Here you have a tension T1, which is the same as here, but T1 is not going to be the same as T2. Okay, because it has to um, work against that inertia and work against this inertia here, so T2. So the trick is you put everything in a bag, all the system here, okay, except the exterior force, okay, the, the force due to gravity. The so gravity is doing all the work here, okay. So it's a composite system. So you have M1G, okay, so the torque, okay, okay, so the torque equals the total moment of inertia times alpha. So that's going to be the total moment of inertia. It's going to be the inertia of the pulley plus, and then everything happens like it's attached here. Okay, so you see it's increased the inertia. It's like you take that mass here and you paste it here. That mass here is pasted here. So M2R square plus M1R square alpha. So you have M1G, R, and then you have the total inertia. Okay, and, and, then, um, and then that's it. And you see that if there is no inertia with the pulley, then you will find our old result from previous 
from a previous unit, which is M1G over M1 plus M2, okay? But you see here, you have the inertia from the pulley, and you have A equals R alpha. Okay, so you can pause the video, think about it. And okay, so we leave that for next time. I went a little bit fast, but hopefully, hopefully it's, uh, you can use your technique.